Walters goes in motion, and Johnson under pressure. Penalty marker goes down on the play. Hit on the release and incomplete. Mark Fields pops into him. It's an incomplete pass. There was inside pressure. The penalty flag thrown by the referee. Don Sasa, 94, came through. Let's check the penalty. Trojans were holding, and it was even late on that. They were coming after Johnson. He got over Andre Abrams, the offensive left guard, who's starting at guard for the first time in his career. He's a backup tackle. He's a pressure guy. There he is to the bottom of your screen, number 94. See, he whips him to the outside. There he goes. He gets good pressure, and they grab him back in the backfield. Pac-10 referee is Pat Flood. The holding call, and the ball is brought back to the 18-yard line. These guys have been really tough to convert third downs all year on Brantley. Only given up 18%. They'll run on it, and Wolters gets nothing. They want to run that draw play. There was a hole there, but the penetration by Sasa, again, making two big plays right off the bat. This whole defense is predicated on the play of their two defensive tackles inside. They're the big guys with the muscle. Don Sasa, 94, Chad Eaton, number 90. 58 yards a game. Less than two yards a snap running against these kids. There was movement. Brent, you and I both noticed Thursday at looking at defensive game tape of the Cougars that a quarterback with a good hard count system can draw them offside. They're gonna, that can help slow down that rush. John Robinson out on the field down here on the near 20. Yeah, he's saying that they jumped and caused contact. There's no foul by rule. Now John's getting an explanation over here. <laughs> And he said, what do you, wait, wait a minute, there was contact, man jumped in, it was offside. Now, how can you do that? I mean, you threw the flag, man came across. Our uh, coach, we just decided that, well, we couldn't decide, so we just pick it up and we'll, we'll have a little duel. Okay, <laughs> let's go. So it's second down and long now. And Johnson, going to go back deep, going to go for the home run. Ew, baby, did they have it that time. Eddie Hervey, Brent, that was Eddie Hervey. They slipped him into the starting lineup. He's been a backup wide receiver. He has great speed. Ran a 20.9, 200 meter, uh, 46, 400 meter to the top of your screen. Little action here. They're throwing the post pattern. Actually lays it right where he has to put it right there. Got to make that catch. I don't think it was stripped. Got to make that catch if you're going to win this football game. One-on-one -on -one coverage to the post. It's there. You make the catch. Third and 28. A drop ball. Puts the Trojans in the hole. They fired at Johnson. They are well short of the first down. Defended by John rushing the free safety. And the Trojans must punt. Now, this is the first time we've seen the Cougars play in person. We've been watching them on tape. I've watched them three games. And you can sense team speed, but when you're up here watching them live and watching those red jerseys flash, boy, it, it really becomes apparent. John Stonehouse has averaged better than 42 yards a punt. Jay Dumas, a very sure-handed wide receiver. Back deep for the Cougars. That's a fine punt. High. Dumas fields it at the 19-yard line. Goes down at the 20 four-yard line where the Cougars will have their first series of the game. We return. Underway in Pullman. Chad Davis here at Washington State. Played for three high schools, then enrolled at Oklahoma and transferred up here, and here he is, the starting quarterback. He's been efficient the last few games. Frank Madu is running back, but they spread the field. A lot of different formations. The offensive line is a question here today. Madu gets the first carry and a couple of yards before Matt Kennelly on this Trojan defense able to bring him down. This defense did not stop Penn State in an earlier game, but folks say they're getting a little bit better, and they had to do that. Williams, Cobb, Cunningham moves in, and if Yanni is also a starter here today, and there's the defensive backfield for them. You're right in saying, Brent, that they have improved. I've watched them over three different ball games in different parts of the season, and Don Lindsay's got these guys really improving over the last few weeks. 
Motion with Dumas. Still leaving Madu in. A short drop. Got a man open over here. And it's a first down. Albert Kennedy from San Jose. A lot of things going on with Penn State and Kajana Carter. Let's go to John Saunders in New York. John. Made it by 21. Big one for them next week. They go down to Champaign to play the Fighting Illini in that defense. Now they go empty in the backfield. We'll see this formation all game long. Using five receivers. Dumas in the middle. Breaks free with a little shake and bake and holds on to the ball after a good hit by Williams. They plan to do a lot of that empty formation today in their game plan, Brent, to spread the defense totally, come in with the different quick screens and the, uh, the quarterback delay patterns and that kind of stuff to the tight ends. They like this kind of stuff. And sometimes, though, the ball gets knocked out of a receiver's hand in that kind of a play more so than the regular play downfield. I think this second and six for Coach Price and the Cougars. First series of the game. Took over following an SC punt. Overload is to the right. A two plants into the middle of that Trojan defense to the 40-yard line. This is going to leave them with about a third and three. This Trojan defense is a very young defense, Brent. They had some true freshmen playing in there. Darrell Russell, number 96, a big defensive end. Brian Kelly, a corner out there, number 42. True freshmen playing their, their first season. That's a, a tough baptism to come against a team like Washington State or any of the teams they've played this year for a true freshman. Now this is where you have to question the Cougar offense. Can they muscle in and get three yards to keep a drive going, or do they have to put it in the air here in this situation? Play fake. They roll Davis. They throw him complete, and they're forced to punt. He was there. He didn't hang on to the ball. He's running. He was in a motion pattern coming from the outside, crossing pattern. He goes down for the football, and I think he's looking around a little bit before he really concentrates on eyeballing that ball to his hands. Well, that was freshman Brian Thomas from Carson, California, who did not hold on. We've had a couple of drop balls here in the early going. Now, Washington State had some problems against Cal in this punt formation last week. They had a block punt. They also had a bad snap. To say the least. George Martin. That's a low return type ball. Now, Grace, the wide receiver, a return specialist. Out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Ray Jackson brings him out of bounds. First quarter, no score. The beer that's colder, bolder, yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. Old Spice Sensitive, it's alcohol-free to take the heat out of aftershave. And Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. We thank Norman Rockwell for the background. First and ten, Johnson and the Trojans. Play fake, gonna go deep, he's got it, Grace! Grace has got it, defender falls, Grace in a foot race on a cutback, and he fumbles, fumbles, still loose, Cougars got it, Washington State ball. Well, Mike Riley, the offensive coordinator for SC, said they wanted to go deep. They used a little move up here on top. Now they'll move it. He'll go a little out move, and then he goes deep on Brian Walker, the least experienced corner. So he got him on that move. He throws the ball perfectly, maybe a little bit short, but he still makes the play. Gets it tucked away, becomes a ball carrier right now. Flashy guy, good athlete. He's running up there. Mobley comes over here to the right, number eight. He strips it right there. The ball's on the turf. It's live. And I'll tell you, when the ball's on the turf with these guys, they get it. A 57-yard game. Nullified by the fumble. Dumas can throw it. Dumas now has a receiver. Complete to the 40-yard line. He gets the ball into the hands of Kennedy. These guys... Washington State has scored 72 of their 146 points after takeaways. That's almost 50% of their points scored. We saw them working this on the practice field. A little reverse to Dumas. Very good athlete. Gets around there. 85, Albert Kennedy goes deep. Corner comes up. They're working on their freshman over there. He reads it as a reverse. It wasn't. It was a pass. That's a 40-yard pass. Dumas to Kennedy. First and 10. Derek Sparks, now the running back for the Cougars. 
gets the call. Twists and spins his familiar move for about a yard and a half, and Kennelly brings him down. You know that uh, defensive coordinator Don Lindsay told me last night in visiting with him in regard to defensing this offense, they spread you out all over the field. And he says, on some plays, we will move our linebackers out and cover off all the spread receivers. Others, we won't. That time, they didn't. Normally, now, a Washington State offense will audible and try to hit the uncovered slot people. They did not do it. Hard to run with more people in there playing defense than you have the block. Now they cover off, Brent. Short drop, Davis, forced to run and brought down by big number 96, Russell. That's his first sack of the year. That's a true freshman out of San Diego. USA Today, Parade Magazine, All-American, St. Augustine High School. Average 19 points a basketball game. If you're going to recruit a defensive lineman out of high school, you might as well recruit a kid with this kind of athletic talent. Just imagine what he's going to be come three, four years down the road. Third and 13. Big Russ comes over to the sideline and congratulated by the assistant coaches as I'm not Don Cunningham checks back in. Kevin Hicks slips out. He's the best receiver of the running backs for the Cougars. Davis, middle is open. Davis inside the 30-yard line. Where it's spotted will determine this. He's short of the first down. See, that's what an offense does for you that spreads your people all the way across the field from sideline to sideline. When the quarterback breaks down, see, they're in a man coverage. Nobody has assigned man-to-man -to, -man to that quarterback. So up he goes inside first down. That's not a first down. They did not get a Didn't good get spot. It. First time we made a mistake this year, Brent. According to the crowd, it wasn't you that made it. It was the official <laughs> who spotted it. Now it's fourth and short. Cougars will be going all out here. They're five for eight in fourth down situations. And you can, you can expect the unexpected with these guys on fourth down. They're liable to throw it. Hicks will run for the first down. First down, Cougars. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. John. John Warren Sapp may be the first player drafted. He is that kind of an impact football player. Come next spring. First and ten now for the Cougars. Inside the USC 30-yard line. No score here in Pullman. Davis out of that empty look. They're leaving the middle open on him, Dick, and he takes off to the 24-yard line. They're going to have to spy one of those defensive tackles inside, Brent. If they're going to spread all the way out like that with that empty formation, someone has to be held responsible for that quarterback in a scramble situation. Maybe Matt Keneally, number 92, up inside. See that big hole? A lot of room for a quarterback, and he's not given a lot of credit for his running ability, but he shows he can make the first pass rusher miss. Second down and seven for the Cougars. This and timeout is yeah. called by Chad Davis, the young man from San Diego. Well, let's talk about Chad Davis here and his coach, Mike Price. Let me tell you, there's some interesting stories. You said I, just, I had a nice opportunity to visit with Chad Davis here pre-game and, and talk to him about the empty formation, and he really likes it. And I said, are you concerned about having everybody all spread out and no backs in there protection-wise? He says, no, Coach, because we have a built-in hot receiver system. If more people come, then we have to protect, and I can get rid of the ball. I understand what we're doing. I'm gaining confidence in it, and I like it. There's another guy that's done an awfully good job there. Coach Price, first time we've been any place where the coach and his wife has us for lunch for dinner. We got to come back here. That's huh? they took good care of it. They took good care of us. I well, saw you scarfing that pumpkin pie. Uh, it was great, man. <laughs> Reminder: we got a doubleheader next Saturday on the ABC and a 9 a.m. Pacific time start. Notre Dame and Florida State. The Seminoles are saying, "Come on down, Lou. We got a little revenge plan for you down here in Orlando." Then Arizona USC. That'll be a big one in the Pac-10. Arizona's still in the thick of things for the Rose Bowl. Penn State, Illinois, Baylor, Rice, Alabama, Mississippi State. Call your cable operator and check pay for the food. The ball is at the 25-yard line. It's second down and seven.
Madhu is the running back. Caught. Left side. Cut off. Nothing doing. He was outnumbered in Brian Kelly among the white shirts, and there is an injured Cougar down at the 32-yard line. And that's Chad Davis who's down. Now they've been redshirting their backup quarter back Chad DeGrenier and didn't want to play him. They wanted to redshirt him. They've used Derek Champion a few times. He's throwing one pass. There's a two-yard loss. He's feeling his left leg. Let's take a little look at it here. And let's take a look on replay now and see what happens to him. This on the toss, toss he's going back, and you can see as he pulls away, something wrong with the left leg, it appears, as he pulls away from center. Now, perhaps a hyperextension of that knee. He'll have to come out for at least a play. And the Cougars are just keeping their fingers crossed that this is not serious. We'll take a break. Chad Davis under his own power. But the bad news is he's still having a little trouble with his left leg. And backup quarterback at number 16, Derek Chapman from Chula Vista, California. He's thrown, as you can see, 12 passes, completing three for 50 yards. That's career, what he has thrown. So now it is third down, and they set him back in the shotgun with Kevin Hicks. And they're going to put him to work right away. Fires! A diving touch on this incomplete. Incomplete. The side judge, and there's Price right behind the official. Price does not agree. The receiver was Thomas, and a penalty flag down at the 35. Price was livid. His feet were in bounds, but whether they touched the turf in bounds or not, I think is the question. Now Price out to chat with Chapman with a penalty flag down at the 35-yard line. And it's being marched off against SC. First After down, defense, Washington State. On the previous spot, automatic first down. Now let's take a look at this catch and non-catch dick and then uh, we'll see about the penalty situation back in the shotgun too. he got it off he's under a little bit pressure right at the end he gets hit he gets the ball out there Boy, I think that's in bounds Brent I thought he made a great call and I'll tell you why in a second but let me see the roughing situation because here's what's important here dick he's coming around the corner right here and wham there's Kendall right there gives him a shot late that's 15 yarder now, we'll take one more, and then I want to show somebody something. Okay, now here is the young man, Chapman, handing off. Oh, nice play. No gain on a great defensive play by Cunningham. Now, on this play, I want you to note how the feet, if they stay above the turf, it appears that the knees hit out of bounds. Watch what the official's looking at. See the feet are up now? Did he drag? What do you think? I think he was in bounds. You know what? I agree with you. I was <laughs> wrong. You're right. I think he's in bounds. It does appear like his right foot there, doesn't it? The trail yeah. foot, huh? See, his knee right there hits. Yeah, He's right. in bounds. You bet. He's in bounds. Okay, but regardless, they get a first down. Second down. <laughs> Coach hasn't lost his eyesight. <laughs> Good job, kid. Frank Madu set behind Chapman. Short drop, fires. And there's a penalty flag again. There's a penalty flag, number 42, Brian Kelly, their young cornerback. They had planned to go after him. He was the defender over there on that side. Now the Trojans are signaling the penalty is against the Cougars. Let's see. Yep. Illegal formation on the offense. Six men on the line. Decline. Second down. Now there, Jackaroo, come in. Yeah, Brent, just behind me in the tunnel, Chad Davis just went to the locker room. The report from the doctor is that he has a sprained ACL ligament in his left knee. They're going to tape it, have him walk on it. It's still not sure whether he'll come back today or not. He wants to, but they've got to take a look at it some more. Well, it's third and 11. Will they just set it down and take the field goal? They're going to bring the end around. Here it comes. And a great hit on Shaheed Evans at the 11-yard line. 
Shahid Evans is out of Vallejo High School using a lot of misdirection on this young defensive football team. A good pursuit team. They get him flowing one way. They hand it off deep in the backfield. Show action here. They pull the offensive lineman. Get a wall block right here by Reese number 70. And here comes old Shahid running outside. Gives him a little shake and break and gets stuck. Now Tony Truant from Seattle will attempt the field goal. The ball will be put down on the 19. It'll be a 29-yard field goal. He beat California last week, and he put Washington State ahead of USC. So the young man who took a costly delay of penalty against Arizona is coming back strong down the stretch. Let's check in on some ABC primetime shows. As he'll try to bring some speed to the backfield for the Trojans. Johnson deflected, incomplete. Good job that time by 92, Dwayne Sanders. He deflected that. They've done a good job of that all year because they're a penetrating type defense. That was the fifth time Sanders has done it alone. Whenever, when you're always going upfield toward the ball, toward the quarterback, toward the running back, you make things happen. And many times, they're good things. Second and 10 now. Johnson and Hervey are the wide receivers. It's the big running back, Walters. Down at the 32-yard line, Mobley is there, and you could see how the first tackler bounced off of him, and they needed help. Yeah, because uh, Mobley came in there in good fundamental position. His knees bent, his head up and everything, and stuck him really good, and Sean just kept going forward. Yeah, Walters is a blue-collar runner, all right, but it's a starch collar now. <laughs> he likes him. But I know this. Mike Riley, the offensive coordinator, said they want to isolate on those corners and get the ball deep. They think they can beat him deep. They've done it once. Leonard Green is in that backfield now, giving him a little more speed on this third and six. Johnson changes up at the line. He wanted him, and he is sacked by Dwayne Patterson from Oakland, California, the sack master. He leads the Pac-10 in sacks, holds the school record in sacks. He's second in tackles for a loss, and he's not a very big guy. He's only about six foot even, 240 pounds, but is extremely quick, has good mobility. He's coming from the right side of your screen. He's got him zeroed in. Boy, tough to avoid that for a quarterback standpoint. Came up to us the other day and said, make sure you say hello to my mom. Yeah. She's back home watching in Oakland, so mom has to be real happy. Great what? punt again. Right. Nice punt over Dumas' head. What a punt. And in the end zone, oh, a break for the Cougars. What a leg, John Stonehouse of Pasadena, California. A 76-yard punt. That'll be the longest punt in the Pac-10 this year because Martin for Washington State held the record at 70. He gets at 76. His longest coming in was 54. Outstanding punt. I lost the thing in the crowd over there, Brent. I thought he'd come down short. I look, it's going into the end zone. Well, tonight, job. Prime time lineup. Scared, stupid. One of your favorites is back in the ABC Family Movie, and then of course it's the Commish. All tonight on ABC. First and ten now for the Cougars. They lead it by three. And Madu is behind Derek Chapman, the reserve quarterback. Off a of fake. Chapman was gonna throw it, hesitated, now comes back and threw it right into the arms of Don Cunningham. I mean, it was like Cunningham was the intended receiver on that play. See, that's a case of not inter the defender intercepting it. It's the case of the quarterback throwing it. He's back there showing his inexperience. He sets up initially off the play action. He looks downfield. He can't find his receiver open. He's pressured to the right side there. Now he throws the ball late down the middle to a crossing pattern. He doesn't see the backer, Cunningham. He's in trouble. That's his first interception in his career at USC. Now, the Palouse Posse and the crowd coming into it, folks. They're under the gun now. The Trojans take over inside the 25. Walters, the big tailback. And Johnson on first down is going to throw for it. Receivers are covered. 
dumps it off now beautifully to the hands of Barnum. And Barnum's inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. He wanted to throw the ball over into his slot combination patterns to the left side of his formation. They covered it. Nothing there. He did the best he could with a play that was well defense. You know, this defensive team in the red zone hasn't had much experience. They've only played two snaps of goal line defense all year. Two snaps. They and like the pressure. All for it. two on those goal line <laughs> on those snaps. snaps. Second down. They get a free one here, the Trojans do. Less than a yard for the first down. They'll be satisfied. And Walters is stuffed. He cannot get it. Very good job by Mark Fields. We were both very impressed, Brennan, watching him play uh, on tape the other day. He attacks a running play. He doesn't wait. He doesn't let the ball carrier get parallel. He moves inside and up at the ball carrier. Does a nice job there. And Ron Childs holds him up. An indication of just how tough they have been on defense. Allowing over 10 points a game. After Walters first is stuffed, first. now it is third and one with Barnum and Walters in that backfield. Well, they have that big offensive left tackle, All-American, two-time academic All-Pac-10 as well. Outstanding student in Tony Baselli, All-American, probably a first-round draft choice. Now, if you're going to make a decision where you're going to run the football, chances are you might as well run over that guy, huh? Now they went back out and remeasured it, and they have apparently the spot gave them the first down. That's hard for me to believe after that hit on Walters. <laughs> but they bring the chains out. That changes the whole complexion. They almost ran another play without a measurement. In this slot formation, they like to run off tackle to the right out of a two, but not just gonna throw quickly. Incomplete, he wanted grace. For some reason, Sasa, the defensive tackle, thought the ball was intercepted, and he went after the quarterback. It looked like he was going to give him lunch right there. Good thing he didn't. Second down at 10, and USC is showing a tendency to throw on first down here against the well, I think defense, and especially inside the 20-yard line. It's a good thing to do it against this kind of defense. If you don't, you're going to get run blitzes on first down. You're going to get a blitz right now, it looks like. Yeah, here they come. Walter's running against it. And he battles his way to the nine-yard line. No, so USC is third down. USC's done a good job with their offensive line. When you stop and think, they've had six different combinations of offensive linemen playing in there, Brent. Today is the sixth time they've started a different package with Andre Abrams in there. You've got to give credit to Mike Berry, the offensive line coach, for patching those guys together and keeping them going. Seconds are going to run out here on the first floor. You know, Kashawn Johnson's a six foot four guy, Brent. He'd be a good guy to get the ball to. Quarter comes to an end. Washington State leads by a field goal, but they've lost their quarterback. Aaron Pullman, Washington, and gentlemen, just moments ago from the tunnel behind me, the starting quarterback for the Washington State Cougars came back out of the locker room. The trainers say he has a sprained medial collateral ligament. They taped him up. They're not sure whether he'll be able to go back and play at full speed. Fumble, and it's still loose. Scooped up and recovered by the Cougars at midfield. There is a flag, however, at the 10-yard line. Mark Fields, number 29, is the Cougar went after it, but the Trojans are saying, come on back down. Hold on now. They blitzed right through that off-tackle hole, got right at the point of exchange. The ball was knocked loose, and when the ball's on the turf against this Cougar defense, they get it. Coming into this ball game, they have recovered 15 of 18 fumbles, and ladies and gentlemen, that is extremely difficult to do. Pat Flood is the referee. For the snap, dead ball, whole start on the offense. There's no play. Oh, baby. I won't repeat what he's saying. <laughs> oh, oh, Mike, he can't believe it. Let's see if we can see this low from the side. 
Man in motion, Walter. Oh, yeah, there's the start right there. That's Garrido, number 76, the big offensive right tackle. Just did him a favor. The ball is brought back to the 13-yard line. Can you get any luckier than that? <laughs> That's why he has never beaten USC in his coaching career. Things like that always happen when the Trojans and the Cougars get together. Now they've got to reset the clock. Now it's third and 11. The Trojans could get a first down inside the two-yard line. But here they don't, they think they don't want to turn it over, the Brent, to them. And, hey, at least get three points out of this thing. They've got a nice one-on-one -on -one situation at the top of the screen. Slant, Johnson, touchdown, SC. And you can thank Norberto Garrido for that movement on the line. And it cost the Cougars a turnover back at midfield. Oh, baby, what a break. One-on-one -on -one coverage right here. Three people over here in the slot. One and one, he's a big, strong wide receiver. It gives him a little stick to the outside, gets underneath him. The ball is thrown perfectly, untimed. Touchdown, well done by Rob Johnson. Cole Ford makes it a 7-3 game. Well, I tell you, SC's defense has to feel pretty good about this whole thing, Brent, because, you know, coming into this ball game, they were last in the Pac-10 and giving up points in the first quarter. But after the first quarter, beyond that, they're the second best team against giving up points. So they might feel pretty good about sitting where they are right now. Well, that game a lot closer than many expected. 35-29. Boy, but they are good, Brent. Having the opportunity to watch Penn State last week and do this to present them. Huh, they're absolutely awesome. They will be second in both polls this week. Write it down. Yeah. They were a 24-point favorite, and they move into Ambush City. We'll get to see that Florida team. Champaign next week. Ooh, Texas A&M getting after it. SC's Cole Ford is a great kickoff man. I mean, he puts about 50% of his kickoffs in his career into the end zone. They can't return them. But those that they have returned, they're last in the Big Ten in covering kickoffs. They've allowed 27.9 yards of kickoff return. Torrey Hunter. Cedar Mobley back deep. For the Cougars, who expect Chad Davis to return, remember it was an interception thrown by Derek Chapman, which set up the USC touchdown. Look at that kick, Brent. Wow! Hunter will down it right there. I want some of what he eats. <laughs> He's got some kick in that leg. One hundred and sixty kickoffs coming into this ball game in his career. He's kicked eighty of them into the end zone. You are not able to return a boy. What a weapon that is. He's a money in the bank guy. But Chad Davis returns and he was barking at that offensive unit when he got in that huddle. He can be a firebrand of a leader. He will need some points. to the 25-yard line. They ran a trap up inside there, Brent. Pulled McDo in there and did a good job. Almost popped it cleanly. John McDonnelly, offensive coordinator for the Cougars, said they had planned to script 24 plays and show them 23 different formations and then let the game plan sort of fall into place from there. No game, it'll be third and five. Well, and he's a good, good stop by Jeff Cott. He really likes to play. He's the leader of the defense. He led the defensive team in tackles last year. And right now, you can see Washington State a lead in time of possession. Both of them have a turnover. Total yards in favor of the... Uh, yeah, that's in favor of USC. Rushing yards, though. USC, two yards. That's hard to believe. Short drop. 
Carpenter incomplete. Carpenter wow. was covered by John Hoodman on that side at the 35-yard line, and he's down on the turf. Sean Knight, his strong safety on the same team, went for the ball and ended up hitting John Herpin and put him down on the turf. <laughs> say, take it easy on your own teammate there, Sammy. George Martin back to punt again, and Ken Grace is the deep man for the Trojans here. Second quarter, 7-3, USC leading Washington State. will come, let this one take a bounce. He could have moved up on it. Elected to let it roll. Yeah, should always try to field him. Move up and field him. You know, the way that USC is rushing the punter, there's a big hole to run a fake punt up inside. No one has touched it. Look at it. Look at Booth. Stop on. Let's make it go downhill. Come on. They get down there, start blowing on it. Look at it. <laughs> you always coach your punt returner to move uh, forward and field okay. the ball. That's a mistake not to do that. It's all downhill in the balloons. We'll be right back. My the line of scrimmage with the Trojans. Walters, the receiver. Perhaps a yard, and we go to Jack O'Reilly. Jack. Well, Brett, we talked to Rob Johnson's older brother, Brett, who played for Michigan State, and asked him about his brother's ankle injury before the game. He said he's playing at 80%. He said the ankle injury is back on the high side of the ankle, and if the team wants to try and go long today, that exposes Johnson when he plants the foot. That's where it puts the most exposure on it. He said if he gets sacked then, little brother's going to have some problems. Terry Barnum is offset in the Trojan backfield. Walters slants in that direction and then twists out to the 15-yard line with Ron Childs making the stop. See, they don't want to run parallel and try to get outside very much with their running game because the, of the speed of the Cougar defense. They might want to get into that counter game that they run so well back to the tight end. Freeze the backer with that counter move, get the alignment over in the point of deck, and give the guy a place to run. Trojans trying for a first down. The Cougars would love a three and out in this field position. They've got that one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top again, Brent. See, that's first down Johnson at the 28-yard line. For a kid like Sean Johnson on a young uh, cornerback up there, uh, that's with a quarterback like Rob then. My gosh. Any kind of protection, that's a completed pass. Brian Walker being tested and, of course, just... At the time when number six tightens up, then they'll fake it and go deep. And there's the big fella down there. He's Chad Eaton right here, defensive left tackle. He's stunning around and running a tech, a tech stunt, going to his right, and boom, gets there just a second late. Well, he's the character in this defensive line, does a radio show over in Seattle every Monday morning. Walters bounces outside, picks up about a yard, and uh, we had an opportunity to talk to Chad Eaton about the rematch with Rob Johnson, what it felt like to go after him and perhaps sack him. And this is what the Wild one had to say. I can taste it. I wanted to go after Cal. After we beat Cal, I wanted to just fly down to SC and, and just do a nice clean sweep of the California schools. And uh, I'm really excited for Rob to come back. You know, he's... He's, uh, he's beat us, he's beat us bad, and, uh, and it's payback time. Oh, the double air ring and all. Misty down there. Second down and nine for the Trojans. Johnson, incomplete. No penalty is called. That's great coverage by Hunter, number 24, who came up over the top of Hervey. Why they went to Hervey rather than Kashawn Johnson, they rolled the coverage and doubled over on Kashawn Johnson. He's forced to throw over here against the good corner, Brent, and that good corner can cover. <laughs> Look at that. He's excited about himself. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do, young man. Forget all that stuff. Just play football. Third down and nine. Down Johnson goes. He's sacked with Chris Hayes coming in underneath on the play. See, Chris.
Chris Hayes, number 22, coming off the right side, is a 192-pound linebacker. He'll be coming over here. He has great speed. He was a running back in high school, and they aren't used to seeing that kind of guy. See the offensive lineman coming out to pick him up is used to looking at a 230-pounder without that kind of quickness. That's a real change. Now here's Stonehouse, and he's been pounding the football for the Trojans here so far. Dumas is back deep. Ooh, that's this a low ball. Low, and Dumas runs up, fields it. And near midfield, good field position. They can play with half a field now, trailing seven and three. So the Cougars love that opportunity right now with 10.27 left in the first half. Defending Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys, nine Eastern and six o'clock along the Pacific Network out here. Giants and the Cowboys, Monday night football. Here are the Cougars trailing USC, 7-3, 10.27 to go. There's what's happening around the rest of the Pac-10 right now, Oregon, hoping also to get to the Rose Bowl. And the handoff, and was that Hicks who had checked into their, uh, yes it is, Kevin Hicks. Ron Lewis, the offensive left guard, pulled and trapped to his right, and that's how they pop that hole up inside there. Not tough, not easy to just take these guys and knock them off the ball. See, he pulls across as the center blocks back. Does a nice job on this, he gets his pads down, Boom, he works his feet up in there. See him drill him like that. Good job, good technique executed there by Ron Lewis. Second and three, and the Cougars go empty. And again, Hicks, number 23, is a good receiver, so they have five wide receivers in this formation. Quick drop, well short of the first down as Jeff Cop popped him again. <laughs> As far as the Rose Bowl situation is concerned, here are, are the schedules for the four teams that are still in the thick of things. And of course, you just got to keep winning, but no one yet controls their own destiny. That could end today. If USC wins here, that would put Oregon in control. Because if Oregon wins out, then they would go on to the Rose Bowl. But they would need USC to beat Washington State here. Everybody's showing blitz. Help. Third and three throws are going to incomplete, and now it'll be fourth and three inside the 45-yard line, and the Cougars will punt. And again, Cop doing his job defensively. Good call by Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator. A linebacker can't pressure the quarterback unless the coordinator tells him to blitz. Here it is right here. He's going to come up and get after him. Now, Don said he didn't want to blitz too much because they don't feel real comfortable with their style and their experience right now in defense. When they get more experience, a little more talented, then he'll blitz more. George Martin back to punt. And uh, hold on here as timeout has been called by Southern Cal. So we're going to take a break as the Trojans call a timeout. 9.03 in the first half and the final round coverage of the Lincoln Mercury Kapalua International. It's all tomorrow here on ABC. Here this afternoon, USC and Washington State, two of the four teams trying to get to the Rose Bowl, 9.03 to go. USC is not in a punt return defense. They're in a regular defensive team looking for a fake. Nice job of Pop pooching that up in the air. Handled at the 17-yard line where the Trojans will put it in play. You know, in visiting with Bill Doba, the defensive coordinator for the Cougars, I asked him about their attacking defense and their approach and philosophy. And he said the reason they do that so much is they don't have the kind of defense depth-wise that can stay on the field 12 and 13 play drives and play bend and don't break. So they're more aggressive so they get off the field quicker because they're going to play basically 11 guys. They don't even substitute nickel very often. Walters to the 19-yard line. John Saunders, what's up? Well, Brent, they hope that they're the ones headed to the Rose Bowl and against Arizona State at their own 33. Ricky Whittle takes off, finds an opening, and forget it, 67 yards. The Ducks have the lead, 7 to nothing. Brent. Uh. Oh, make that spin on the one-yard line and fumble it sometime and see how the coaches like that move. Rodney Sermons, the freshman out of Diamond Bar, into the backfield. Johnson gets good protection. Middle, open, incomplete. And he had his tight end right there. 
Jeff Ditz, he read the coverage. He wanted to throw the ball again to the weak side up there to Kashawn Johnson. They roll the coverage that way. He comes back to his tight end, lays it right there. He'd only been thrown to one time this year, so we'll, we'll excuse the fact that he dropped that ball, but he's got to make that catch in these tight football games. Look at this, Cougars defense. Only 18% of the third down situations. And, and Cal last week was the only team that ever got more than four. They made five. They're coming after him. They don't get it this time either. Second sack. See, if he's going to go deep. 14 yard line, Ron Childs. If you're going to go deep, you've got to let the ball go. So he got back there. He hesitated. He had the deep one-on-one -on -one situation. If you hold it against this blitzing defense, you're going to take a hit. you got to get rid of it. Back there, the constant pressure. He can't see the pressure from his back right now. He slides. He sees that one. Here it comes behind. See? Stonehouse out of the Trojans end zone at the one-yard line. Dumas runs up again, field position at the 44-yard line. Dumas, six yards closer on this return. Stonehouse is again trying to break the 70-yard barrier, kicking it way too low. He's got to get that nose up and get it there so he can get a better net, net punt. He's the number two punter in the conference zone. Well, at the conclusion of the game, we'll select a genuine Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And for the 24th year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Cougars first down inside the 45-yard line. Madhu. Flag down and Madhu at the 36-yard line is down, but there is a penalty flag. They're pulling up the backside guard and trapping either at the short tackle spot or all the way outside has been effective for them. They probably should use that more. Offside, defense. first down. Cougars with a first down inside the Trojans' 35-yard line. Trailing 7-3. Field position after the defense forced three downs and out. Davis fires high and complete with John Herpin riding the receiver out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Boy, that ball was high. Great job of the receiver getting up there and taking that ball out of the air. He's six foot three, and he's a good athlete, but fine. you'll see right here, here comes the ball. Look how high that thing is. Oh my gosh. Good jump reach ability, good concentration by Albert Kennedy. You gotta work on those circles on the move, coach. <laughs> <laughs> now. now three wide receivers, Davis and the Cougars. And it's Madhu on a cutback. And he is stuck by Kennelly. Madhu should stay at the point of attack. He's bouncing outside the trap block. If he goes back up underneath the trap block, he has a running lane there. He's getting outside of it, not patient enough waiting for that trap to happen. Third and six. Looks like tight man or blitz coverage, Brent. Yeah, he sees it. He's audibling right now. He moves Madhu up. Short drop. Uh, and the wide receiver didn't get the message. A little miscommunication out there with Albert Kennedy. And that puts the Cougars in a fourth down spot. And Coach is going to go for the long field goal attempt right now. Either that or the fake field goal in this situation. They're in a spot where you could think seriously about faking the field goal. The holder is Dumas, number one, the wide receiver. He has excellent hands. He can also throw the ball. He has already done it here today. His longest in his they career. Have worked on right? this. They are electing to go ahead with the kick, and it's not going to be good. The Trojans are going to take over, leading it 7-3.
his longest field goal was 45 yards, and he was one for four from that distance. I could read his lips, and you know what he just said to the quarterback? We should have gone ahead and went for it. That's yeah. exactly what Coach Price yeah. just said on the uh, far sideline. Well, he's deeply involved in coaching the quarterbacks himself, so he's the decision maker. Well, the posse back on the field now, and uh, the Trojans will see if they can move the ball a little bit better than they have here lately. Walters is offset a bit. Johnson again, short drop, fires incomplete, yeah, and he wanted Edward Hervey. You don't want that, right? Somebody on the Washington State sideline saying, you don't want that ball, 88. You don't want it. You know you don't. It was interesting at practice the other day out here. The Cougar offense working on the left side of this field, defense far right. And the offense throws a pass way down. And they have to say, look out, get out of the way. And somebody from the defense yells back, what are you throwing a ball that long for in practice? You're never doing a game anyway. <laughs> Typical defensive comment. That was Hunter that made that statement. Second down and 10 now, and they hand it off. And there's the young man with a little dash, Leonard Green, the junior, and he slashes through that hole to the 34. You know, that's a good way to handle that penetrating defense, too. Come with the traps and that kind of thing. Also, get some draws going up inside there like that. USC is an excellent draw team in watching them on tape. You want to get into that phase of their offense. Need three yards for the first down. And timeout being called. And that's going to leave the Trojans with one. Remember, in that punt situation, when they thought the Cougars might be thinking about faking the punt, USC called its first timeout. And now they will use their second right here. I want to tell you about the uh, plane trip up here for USC. Because there was such a load on it, they couldn't put in enough fuel, a little bit of delay because of the weather. So they stopped and refueled in Las Vegas. And some of the youngsters were able to go inside the terminal there and drop a few quarters in. It says if you look in the USC handbook, it's okay to go to Las Vegas if you need fuel. It's not a violation. I want everybody to know that. It's perfectly legal. <laughs> that's one of the few things that's yeah, not a violation. That's right. It's a, Chav, yes, you ever see the book? Did you ever <laughs> yeah. see the book? Oh, no. It'll take you a couple years to read it. I was only head coach in college two years. I didn't we, read it. We need more rules, more laws. You know yeah. what I mean? So we don't have enough. Lawyers have to make a living. You know well, I guess you're right, man. I mean, they just need a bigger, they got to play with a bigger rule book. So it's unbelievable, isn't it, folks? Well, coming up at the Prudential half, John Saunders with scores, highlights, and John's going to have a conversation with Notre Dame head coach Lou Holtz. Lou with a big one next week against Florida State. Irish has struggled a bit this year. The Trojans need three yards on this third down, and they've got it in some in the hands of Johnson. Boy, I tell you, Rob Johnson did an awfully nice job on that one, Brent, because they stunted the outside linebacker back inside, see? And he came right in the quarterback's face, and he fired that nice slant pattern. No wonder he was a Heisman candidate. To the left side of your screen, you'll see the blitz come. Freeze it right there. See him coming right down the face here. He sees him, too. He ignores him and throws the strike. Well done. Good poise by Rob Johnson. Well, the change-up in the look of the running situation has altered things now for the Trojans, and Johnson turns hey, back and uh, throws incomplete in number 88. Edward Hervey is uh, getting himself quite an indoctrination here today. Well, you know, he's a junior college transfer at Brenda Pasadena Junior College. He came in the fall of 93. He's second in the junior college state 200-meter run, so this guy can fly. If you're going to throw the ball, you might as well throw it to a guy that can run. Last time the Cougars Dick made it to Pasadena was 1931. You did the game. <laughs> That's right. Second down and 10. And Johnson quick firing strike over there to that side. Oh, midfield. Wow. Ron Rushing was the free safety who closed in with Ron Childs hitting Hervey first. Baselli doing a nice job in the conference right now. Nice job, Tony Baselli. Now the posse will try to dig in and stop another first down on third down. Johnson quick got it. Johnson, what well, goes now in a foot race for the end zone. Johnson scores. 
There's a penalty flag down. Hold on. This one could be coming back. There's a penalty holding. flag, and holding is the call. Look at John. John says, you know, I knew there'd be days like this. In a way, in a way that evens things up, because <laughs> the Trojans scored a touchdown down here after holding the Cougars. Remember the, the turnover that was taken away from the Cougars. Repeat third down. So the breaks have now kind of like evened up. This brings the touchdown back. So we'll play on. They have a blitz coming at the top of your screen. Number 83, Tyler Cashman. He's a tight end, not normally involved in, in drop back pass protection. And he pulls him down from the outside. Takes away from a real nice individual move by Kashawn Johnson. Look at Johnson. He's upset. Gosh. If they keep giving you that kind of coverage, you're going to get another one of those young men. Third and 21. They run the delay. That was Rodney Sermons who came firing out there close to midfield. A great call in that situation. The Trojans don't get a first down. A lot of John going on back and forth between these two teams. The Cougars have 50 kids from California on their roster. They probably, a lot of them played in all-star games and, and against each other in conferences. Some of them on the same high school team. SC has two guys from Washington. They don't need help from up here. Stonehouse punting to Dumas again. Coming up he the got line, it. they got a piece of it. The punt is blocked partially, and then it takes a USC spin inside the 40-yard line. It was a very wobbly, wobbly snap, Brent. You know, it got back there very slow. You ask your center to get the ball back there in eight-tenths of a second. That was about 1.8 tenths of a second. It was a lame duck. You'll see what I mean here. The ball will come back to the punter, but it's not really firing back there nicely. Pressure right up inside. Good snap. That ball would have been gotten off, though. That man should not be that clean up in the middle like that. Yeah, that man was number 52, Robert Booth, who came clean up the middle and got a piece of it. Now it's first and 10 for Chad Davis and the Cougars here. Late going second fumble recovered by the Cougars, and uh, they'll lose five yards on that. Their both teams are making enough mistakes to lose the game. <laughs> They're balancing them out, though, as you said. That's one of the disadvantages of the shotgun. One more chance for a mistake. Well, I look at our scoreboard there, and that game's still in progress because both teams are in white, and when it's a final score, the winner will come up in yellow for you. Second, second down now, and uh, Chad Davis fires high to Incomplete over here. He hasn't got the ball to Chad Carpenter yet. Has no, you know, and he's thrown a number of balls high. I wonder if that uh, left knee, you know, that he comes forward and gets planted is bothering him a little bit, not finishing his follow-through, because we've seen him throw three or four up over the top so far today. Let's go to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent Dick Vermeil is absolutely right. He still is favoring that knee. We had a chance to get a, get a word back from the bench about him. He says it, it hurts a little bit, but like a tough goer that he is, he wants to stay in there. But when we look at the interception that was thrown by his backup, he ought to stay in there. Third and 15. Oh! Lovely oh! to the 43 by Andy oh! Cunningham. Maxwell. Incomplete on the hit. And there's a complaint from Kenny Adams. Holy mackerel, you can see that coming. That's the one disadvantage of catching those crossing patterns inside. Cunningham gave him lunch. Oh, man. Headache time. Woo! He's excited. Look at it. He's happy about that one. Out of Gar High School, Cerritos, California. George Martin, hunting again, low snap. Gets it off, and he got a beauty off, considering the circumstances. And now Grace dancing. 
down inside the 20-yard line. Boy, I tell you, that punt coverage, I haven't seen a punt coverage team sprint like those five guys sprinted in a long time. These kids really know how to play the football game. Everything they do, they do. Balls out. Oh, yeah. Here, 29 to go here. Second quarter. Figured to be a low-scoring game, didn't it? And it is. 7-3. Here's Johnson. Leonard Green. Offset again. They were able to use him once. Gets good time. Now over to the left. Couldn't find a receiver open. And... Number 29, Mr. Fields, in pursuit. He wanted to run a little stop and go to Larry Parker to the wide side of the field, but good coverage again by Torrey Hunter. They're picking on the wrong guy when you want to beat him deep or run some kind of a double move on him. He is a very fine cover guy, and the NFL people up here scouting him uh, think the same thing. He's probably going to play on Sunday for a long time. Sermons, and Sermons is to the 22-yard line. Well, there's a host of the Cougars, Fields, Childs, and Buddy that are there. Those two defensive tackles are doing a great job, and it allows Mark Fields, number 29, the inside linebacker, to really get after the ball carrier. The kid, here he is right in the middle, but these two tackles do a real good job, and that frees up Fields. Now watch him attack the football. He's just moving forward, moving forward, moving. Bang, there he gets over and gets in on the play. And State calls a timeout. See, you can't play this 4-3 defense without the two big tackles inside. And fortunately for Washington State, they have the two big tackles inside. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, you know, Mike Price is known around here as a player's coach. You know, he likes to motivate the players in pretty un unique and unusual ways. Listen to what he did a couple of years ago as the Washington State Cougars got ready for their contest against the USC Trojans. He went out on campus and he enlisted an under undergraduate and he paid him a little money and he said, look, I want you to dress up as Tommy Trojan. Find me a brown horse. He brought the horse and Tommy Trojan out on the walkthrough day before the game. And as it rode around the stadium here, Mike Price pulled out a starter's pistol, shot at Tommy Trojan. Trojan fell off the horse. Unfortunately, the next day, they didn't win. <laughs> You know something, Jack, when I was coaching at UCLA, I thought about hiring somebody to do the same thing on game day. Sermon, the running back. Sermon down at the 23-yard line and Fields is there again, number 29. He came into the ball game making 64 tackles, ranked fifth in the, the Pac-10 in sacks, and as good as his defense he came in, as number one in the country, they do not have one tackler ranked in the 25 best tacklers in terms of number of tackles in the Pac-10. Everybody makes plays on that defensive front. It has been a defensive dominated football game. John Robinson's Trojans with the only touchdown came after an interception against Washington State's backup quarterback. Chad Davis was receiving some medical attention for an injured knee. Davis playing but obviously still bothered by the knee. And USC uses its last timeout at 128. Cougars keeping the pressure on this punting game. They would like to have one last fling at it here with 128. The Cougars will have a timeout remaining. Dumas, the wide receiver, is back deep. You know, with the long snap problem that SC had this last time, I think it'd be a good idea, you know, from a coaching standpoint, to go ahead and, and come after it again. What do you think about the Irish and Seminoles next week? Well, first off, Florida State's a better football team, but you never, never 
go against Notre Dame and Lou Holtz when he's had a couple weeks of preparation. He's had a bye. <laughs> you've, you've said that many times yourself, Brent. What about Penn State down to Champaign to take on Illinois? I can't picture anybody being able to beat Penn State. I really know. I've, you know, I, uh, I've seen them. I've evaluated their talent and, and, and presented their game. They're awfully good. Illinois defense, outstanding. But I don't know if the total package is there to compete for four quarters. So here we go now. Stonehouse and Dumas. Good snap. And the Cougars. Set a return for Dumas. And he can't slip. He's Excellent down recovery. at the 30 second, 32 yard line. Jesse Davis. Well, the covering, and there's the Bull Coalition Top 25, Nebraska and Penn straight and that argument figures to continue right on through the new year the way things are set up in that situation Washington State ranked 15 this is the first time in 36 years that the Cougars have been favored against the Trojans they came in here favored by a point they go empty here Set that screen and they hit Thomas. Thomas busts across midfield with a minute ten and a timeout remaining. See that that kind of screen is excellent against that prevent zone that they were in that time. They were in a two deep zone, rushing four, covering five underneath, two deep. Linebackers back out of there. That allows the receiver to catch the ball cleanly and the offensive lineman to get down and get their blocks. Davis and the Cougars in a hurry up. High and incomplete, and there again, the injured ankle. As Dick was explaining to you, unable to push off. Carpenter, the intended receiver. And the clock stops on the incompletion. And now it'll be second and ten. This style of offense is really prepared all year round for the two-minute offense because they're in a spread all the time. They love to throw the ball. But their run-pass ratio is actually 60-40 uh, run. But they would just as soon throw the football when you get right down to it. And they're well prepared and schooled to run a two-minute offense. They said that was an injured knee that Davis is playing with. It goes deep. And cut! At the 16-yard line. He pushed off, too. Great play ball. by Dumas. He pushed off, too. He took his left hand and pushed Herman. Herman. The defender might have taken him out of bounds here. Watch and see if that isn't the call in this situation. That's John Herpin working on Carpenter. It really doesn't matter in college football. The only thing that counts is the ball. That's incomplete. Yeah, and it was overruled. They're yeah, changing that job. one and bringing it back. Yeah, that was a, yeah. That's a good correction on that play. Yes. Plus, they could have called offensive interference on that one because he definitely took his left hand and, and shoved with top of your screen right there. He shoved just prior to that. Different than in pro football, if you hit a guy and knock him out of down, and it's ruled that he would have caught it in bounds, that it counts, not in college. That official was watching the feet, and the other officials who happen to catch the ball as Davis comes back high. Great grab by the tight end at the 42-yard line. Eric Moore snaps it down, his first reception. 40 seconds, and the clock is moving right now. He's One of his receivers have got to go to him and say, listen, Jack, you're getting the ball high all the time. Bring it down. He'll throw underneath. He comes right back to Eric. He's going to have to take the ball and just down it. Can on that. Now it's fourth down. That was the fourth down. Excuse me, I lost one there, Brent. Uh, coach not happy with that uh, the last sequence. Been a frustrating half, but isn't it always for Washington State when they play the Trojans? That's been the history of this rivalry. Nothing new there. And Johnson takes a whack from Dwayne Sanders and throws the ball out of bounds. And uh, Johnson a little slow at getting up now. That hurt. 
one thing as far as USC's quarterback situation is concerned. They have one of the better backups along the West Coast in Brad Otten. 92 Dwayne Sanders gets underneath here and outside underneath the tight end outside the tackle and gives him lunch right there. That should never happen. 19 seconds. And the Trojans content to run the ball with Rodney Sermon as the freshman. And that's it. They won't even snap it again. USC will take its lead on into the locker room and there's an injured Washington State player, Dwayne Sanders is limping at midfield. Coach Price looking back toward him. And they're going to need medical attention. Sanders injured on that last play. So John Saunders will be coming your way with the Prudential Halftime Report right here next on ABC. College football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, and UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. Stay tuned for the Prudential Halftime Report. After the games, and it's 7-3 at the half with SC leading with Dick Vermeil and Jack Abrut. I'm Brad Musburger. Welcome back to Pullman, Washington, everybody. <laughs> you know, this could be huge for Oregon, Coach. If SC can hang on to a win here, Oregon could go to the Rose Bowl just by winning out, so it's big. But, you know, USC could really be far ahead in this game. Well, they should be further ahead. They turned the ball over after a nice reception one time. They've had a touchdown call back. But, hey, that's all part of the game. I look for both teams offensively to do a better job because so far neither team has played very well. They don't look like Rose Bowl teams. Yeah, it's a little rusty looking. Yeah, out a little there. rusty. Yeah. Well, here's this 57-yarder. Uh, you talked about SC turnovers. Well, right? they throw the, the nice ball, a little out-and-up move. They get it to Grace. It gets it stripped away from him. He looks like he's going to go in to score, and they come and take it away. And that's what... The, the Cougars do. They take the ball back. Good job. They go ahead and get a field goal out of it. Then the other way, SC throws a nice little touchdown pass to Kassan Johnson. They get a holding penalty. He throws it right here. Makes a little whirl move right there. On walk. Touchdown. Call back. That's been the first half. Look at this. The big thing, though, what I'm surprised is SC has really not run the ball as well as they'd like to. But I'll tell you what the Cougars need here in the second half. Go get them. Come on. I'll keep on running. <laughs> <laughs> they could use him against the Red Dog. <laughs> Yay, there you go. There you go, all the way, Coach. There, well, there's your numbers now. Well, you can see neither team running the ball very well. 22 yards, 36 yards. Passing the ball better. I look for SC to go deep a little bit more in this second half. Both teams with a turnover. Seven points for Washington State. Three here. Pretty balanced football game. Neither team playing very well offensively. Jack Aroot. Brent, let's first update you on the injury to Dwayne Sanders, the defensive end for the Washington State Cougars. He also has a sprained medial collateral ligament. He also has had a tape and is expected back. I had a chance to talk to Mike Price as he came out of the locker room and I asked him if he was going to change anything. He said the one thing we're going to do in the second half is try and run the ball more. Also, I got a chance to talk to Rob Johnson, the quarterback. Remember, he came up a little gimpy there in the last series of plays for USC. I asked him if it was his ankle. He said, no, believe it or not, I got a Charlie horse. Walked it off. I feel fine. Cole Ford, who's excellent as a kickoff man, deep to Hunter. This will be down to the end zone. And the Cougars will put it in play. First and ten. Coming out from the 20-yard line against John Robinson and the Trojans' defense. You know, I talked to John for a long time about bringing the team up here and prepared for bad weather. Fortunately, they didn't get the bad weather, but he said they really made light of it all week. He said he did not want to give his kids any excuse for playing poorly. Hey, he said, I'm going to tell them for the game. Listen, nobody ever died playing in cold weather. Well, that's right. <laughs> First and 10 now for Davis. The transfer from Oklahoma, trailing 7-3. Cougars in need of a little spark. Madu, the ball carrier, out to the 23-yard line on first down. You know, last week against Cal when Washington State was behind, they came out, went to the two tight end, two wide out formations, started running their counter play, and really felt that helped change the tempo of the football game. And this is what they're coming out starting to do right here in the second half. Well, that short drop, Davis featured. They're going to keep it on the ground. Trojans up, they throw it too. And instead, Madu gets a first down with Sammy Knight pushing him out of bounds. Well, 
Our sideline reporter, Jack, said the coach said he was going to come out and run the football, and that's what he's doing. A lot of times we have coaches tell us they're going to do these things, and we get up in the game, and we start telling the audience about everything the coach has told they're going to do, and the game's over, they haven't done any of it. Now, there's something the Cougars don't need. Madu is limping off. The ball was spotted a yard short of the first down on this side. He's their bigger back of the two, believe it or not. Uh, Kevin Hicks is a guy that comes in and gives them a little flash. Right now, they have Derek Sparks in there. And Sparks, oh, nice play. Get it because of Brian Williams. He's an excellent football player. When you watch him play on game tape, you just consistently see him making difficult plays. He can penetrate, he can chase. He's also very good on pass defense. They leave him in there, upper top, right here on your screen. Comes underneath. See, he's got a stunt called. He's working. The defensive end went out. He went underneath. There he is making the play. Good defensive call by Don Lindsay. George Martin hunting, and the Trojans showed 10 across that line here early in the second half. Gets it off, and Grace makes the catch at the 37-yard line. And now it's Rob Johnson and the Trojans with Sean Walters returning as the running back. Now Washington State's 0 for 9 on third down conversion. Now Washington, USC hasn't done much better, but West SC should do, I think, too, is get that running game going. I know they have a game plan of bringing in Leonard Green in there and let him run at that tailback position. They're going to throw it on first down. Right over the middle, Hervey is the receiver. Ooh. He takes a pop near the 45 from Hayes. You know what he did a good job of that time? He saw contact coming, and he really covered up that football. He knew he was going to get hit, but he was going to sacrifice his body, but he wasn't going to fumble the football. Coaches are going to like you for that one, Eddie. Edward Hervey has become the go-to guy here, and they've got several good receivers. Payshon Johnson. Kenny Grace, there are the number of tackles, Child with eight and one sack. Walters, first down, crosses midfield. Nice job of lead blocking by the fullback, Terry Barnum. To run an ISO like that, you have to have a back that will go in and take on that linebacker. And Barnum is not that big. He's only 5'10", 180 pounds. And Brent, you and I have in the Big Ten seen some big fullbacks doing great jobs this year. But there was a little guy doing a good job. An offensive lineman limping down there. That's uh, Chris, Chris Pollock. Pollock. They can't afford to lose many more guys in that offensive line. And we get word from the sideline that uh, Madhu, Jack, what's the latest on him? Well, Brent, it's not good news. I'm beginning to think that maybe I'm an ambulance attendant down here on the sidelines. Madhu is suffering from a very badly sprained left ankle. They're checking it. He's having a great deal of difficulty walking. The trainer said they will tape it. But they're not sure if he'll be coming after him. Johnson. Let's see where that ball spotted. It's close to a first down. See, that time they rushed six, covered with five, and Johnson knew exactly where to go with the football. Excellent quarterbacking by the quarterback. And the Trojans moved the chains twice here in the early going in the second half. Good halftime adjustments here by assistant coach and offensive coordinator Mike Riley. And they punch that ball down inside the 40 on the Cougars. Now they come back with Walters. Makes a little counter move. And he's inside the 25-yard line. And suddenly, the Trojans are eating up large chunks of real estate against this Ballyhoo defense. See, he started strong side, running to his right, and got good movement by the offensive line. He got the offensive line coming off this way. Freeze it right there. Now you'll see that he sees the cutback. Good vision by Walters. Good blocking backside. Very important to cut off those backside blocks or tackles. Needs to regroup here. Johnson out of the backfield inside the 10 yard line. Terry Barnum. He has been their go to running back out of the backfield. He caught 20 balls coming into here. He caught a nice one a week ago against Cal, too, coming out of the backfield. 
See, they rolled up and double covered the wide receiver, but they didn't pick up the back coming out of the backfield. He's under pressure. He's poised. Here comes the pressure. It doesn't bother him. Sasa pulls off right there. First and goal. The ball at the Cougars five, and this has been a classic drive. Walters is the tailback. Fake, and it's Herbie coming around, and Herbie smashed at the nine by Patterson. Didn't fool old Patterson. That's why he has 14 tackles for a loss coming into this ballgame. He's very good on end of rounds and reverses the coaching staff told us. He's got a good here he is right there. For this now look at it. Watch him pause right here and just sort of eye voice. Come on, go ahead. Run that reverse. I'm waiting for you. You know, another guy he was waiting for was you the other day. He made a beeline for you and came over. Couldn't, couldn't wait to come over. Yeah. <laughs> Second down and goal. Johnson let throw now. Got a slant. Johnson touchdown SC. See, they brought everybody that time. Same play they scored on in the first half. One on one, little shake move. That you you got to stick the defender outside. Give him a little shake here. See, he's bump and run. Now, watch him push. Give him a little stick right there. He's frozen. Back underneath it. Good job. Good throw. Cole Ford. Block. Block. And it's a free ball. And the Trojans down it right there a week ago against Cal. Washington State blocked one and returned it for two points. And Sasa blocks the extra point. And that is a big block. Leaving it at 13-3. That's a 10-point difference right now. He's also the guy that blocked the PAT against Cal. It was returned for two. We'll be right back. Running back with Madu's injury. They now have to go to a backup running back. They're going to throw it down by 10, of course. High and incomplete. Is he... Again, the ball thrown high, but pressure can force you to throw the ball high. The Cougar offense being stifled by the Trojans' defense in this game. Don Lindsay's scheme so far and his talent has worked well. Sparks ahead for a couple of yards and cop. That <laughs> Cobb loves for somebody to run right at him. He just loves it, too. He's down on the ground. He makes a tackle. He gets up, and he's cheering, getting up, just because he got to hit somebody. Love those kind of football players. His dad was a good football player. Played at Arizona State years back. Out of San Ramon High School in Northern California, Danville. Now, how good is USC's defense today? Washington State is 0 for 10 on third down. This is third and eight against this defense. Make it 0 for 11. He may not have been able to see that back looking into the sun. Because I was down there pregame looking back that way, Brent, and it was bad. It really didn't look like he saw that ball. And this young man has a good hands. Here the ball coming right in the middle of your screen. See, he doesn't see it. He doesn't see the ball. 0 for 11 now, right? Third down conversion. George Martin standing inside the Cougars 25 yard line. Oh, lousy punt. Could take a Washington State bounce, however. They're going to down this one inside the 20 yard line. It'll be downed at the 16 yard line. Southern Cal leading. <laughs> That's what it looks like to snap a football. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet and the beers. The diamond is forever. The snow scenes from outside of Pullman, Washington here yesterday. When winter's first storm swept through here. First and ten. Johnson getting time. Going to go deep. 
Hunter had coverage, receiver had slipped. That was Kayshawn Johnson who was down, and it'll be second and ten. And Dick, you pointed out there's been a change in the defensive backfield. Well, they've taken Brian Walker, the one young cornerback out, number six has been playing, and put Ray Jackson in there at the corner. And they now are flopping Torrey Hunter toward number three, Kayshawn Johnson, the big play receiver. Wouldn't you say now that this Cougar defense has to come up they with a takeaway? they to get the takeaway. Take and SC is the toughest no. team in the country to take the ball away. They'd only given it away six times coming into this ball game. There is Walters. Picks his way to the 19-yard line, maybe three yards, and Mark Fields makes still another stop. He's a big guy at 225 pounds. Has two 200-yard rushing games coming into this game this, uh, this season alone, so he can move the ball upfield. Tough to move it consistently on the ground against these guys. Now it's third and seven, and let's see if they pick on Jackson and see what he's got over here on this corner. That's going to be close to a first down for the Trojans. That was Kenny Grace, and he appeared to have it. Mike Riley doing a nice job of calling the plays down there on the field and mixing it up. He said he tried to calling the plays from the, up in the press box a couple times, and Johnson didn't like it, and he really didn't like it right there. He has great composure on the field calling plays, never gets too excited, never too upset, just does his job. Excellent football coach. Both you and I got to know this guy in the World League. San Antonio, what were they, the Rough Riders? Yeah, yeah that's something that's like that. Let me a lot of fun. Let me tell you something about that young man. There's going to be a lot of quality jobs opening up. He's one of Bear Bryant's boys. Yeah. And uh, that's a young man that some people should consider as a head coach. Riley's an excellent oh. ball man. And uh, what's what's the Sasa doing? Was he pulled over there? <laughs> he likes to play that kid. You know, He's a hot Sasa on that play, kids. <laughs> Here I come. Ready or not. He's just a little early. But he does love to play football. Dead ball, false start on the offense, repeat first down. He's at a Long Beach Poly High School, then Long Beach City College, one of seven children. You're allowed to move early if you've been raised with seven children, aren't you? Yeah. Especially, <laughs> especially when that guy moves first. <laughs> he thought they said, chow's down. <laughs> first and 15 now for the Trojans. They lead it 13-3. Two touchdowns, blocked extra point. Cougars only with a field goal here today. Show blitz and yeah, he moves to move Walters over there, and now Cougars back away. They come to Lane, and he gets it off into the hands of the receiver Barnum. Childs was coming, and we send you to New York and John Saunders. John, hey, that was an excellent job by Chris Pollock, sliding to his left, coming out of his right guard position, and picking up a blitz. Here he's right here. The blitz is going to come right up inside here, and he's going to slide over here and pick it up. Not easy to do. Excellent job. See that? Come up! Johnson goes on it. They don't do that very often. You know that they're coming in, they've lost two interceptions and four fumbles coming into this football game. Third down. Yeah. Trojans need 12 yards. They'll run Walters short of the first down. They have elected to send it back on a punt, and we'll see if the Cougars attempt to block still another punt. John Stonehouse, number 17, trots onto the field. That was a big defensive series for him, Brent. They're going to end up in pretty good field position right here. Linderman, the snapper. High snap. Here they come. He gets one off, and Dumas is sent back to the 20 and inside. What a beautiful punt. Spins, and he's not getting away. Down at the 19-yard line. Quincy Harrison. He's a backup cornerback. Boy, I'll tell you, it's tough to make that one-on-one -on -one tackle like that once they've got the ball in their hand. Yeah, well, we have a time here. Let me remind everybody that uh, tomorrow night we get an hour of America's Funniest Videos. Special guest Kenny Rogers. Then a show that uh, really has to be great. Siegfried and Roy. 
They work regularly at the Mirage in Las Vegas. They're on for an hour. After that, the hand that rocks the cradle, that's all tomorrow, right here on ABC. First and ten. Get up, get up, get yeah. up. Oh, oh, in the middle to the 25-yard line. Oh, they did a nice job of executing that counter play that time. The guard did an awfully nice job. Ron Lewis of pulling and kicking out backside tackle. The big guard will pull and he'll kick out. The big tackle will pull and lead through as the tight end seals down. Oh, he turned out rather. Here it goes. Here's the trap block. Here's the tackle on through. Look at that whole well-executed play. Kevin Hicks now gives him a little bit of a dash in that backfield. They'll keep him in that running back spot. He's also a good receiver. The right back with him again, and he's stuffed that time by Jeff Kopp, and we'll send you back to John Saunders. The game's doing a lot of business right now, John. Yeah, start to put it on cruise control there. Yeah, they? Mr. Warren Sapp, the defensive tackle. He's a dandy. Third down and five for the Cougars. Remember now, they have not yet converted a third down. Still have it. Actually, now, Brian Thomas came off and sort of eased up, not thinking the ball was going to come to him, and then turned off turned it on and sprinted. And that's one of the few times now that USC has come in with a nickel defense. Had more defensive backs in there playing pass defense. They've got to be very pleased with their third down defense right now. Or the Cougars have to be very upset about their third down offense. George Martin in again. And there's Mr. Grace. Richmond, California. Looking for a chance to get the Trojans a little field position. At the 31, slips the tackle and oh, oh but the coach is no, down. down. He was down at the 34-yard line. Boy, what effort these kids get! Consistent effort on every play. USC 13, Washington State three. Oregon delighted about this score. 13-3, SC, Rose Bowl, Oregon gets to go with wins in their remaining three games, and Washington State must lose or tie. Arizona goes with wins their remaining three, and they need a combo. They need help. Washington State still has to come back and win this. USC then would need help against Oregon if they win here today and a win out. So nobody in total control. Oregon can wind up in control if USC hangs on here. Oh, great Great job of defensive tackle play by Don Sasa. Holy macro, did he stuff him. So Oregon ahead 13-3. USC up by the same count here in Pullman. So everything is coming up Oregon's way right now. This is the combo that they had hoped for today. USC has lost too many good offensive linemen inside of that guard position, and it's hurting them today. Coming after him. Got him. Sasa. Sasa is eating his lunch. He's really whipping him. He's getting after, again, a young man that hasn't been playing guard, never played guard in a game before. 94, middle of your screen right here. He's working right here on Abrams. He just, good power rush, takes him to the outside, arm under, swim. Here he comes. Wham. That quarterback had to hold the ball, but still awfully good power rush there by Don Sassa out of Long Beach Poly High School, Long Beach City College. And they've turned out some dandies over the years. Might try him on offense as a fullback. I'll tell you, he comes off the ball, he probably make a fine offensive tackle. There he is again. They set the screen on third and 16. And the stop is made by John Rushing. John came into the ball game with a career of 313 tackles, ranked sixth in the history of Washington State. So seeing him make a tackle like that doesn't surprise me. They aren't easy to make those tackles out there. You know, all alone, one-on-one. -on -one. Good defensive series again. Well, it's Stonehouse and Dumas. We've played this song a few times. Cougars are going to try to set a return. Great punt again. Dumas at the 10-yard line. 
Flips the first. Got it. Oh, got it early. Dumas from behind to the 44. Put it down. And the Cougars cover it. Number 20 was able to pounce on that ball when it came up. Old Derek Henderson. Well, he came into the ball game, the sixth best punt returner in the Pac-10. His long was 25. He just did another one. The punter actually out punted his coverage. That's a tough tackle right there. But the coverage is late in getting there. They don't come to balance. They give him a crack. And he just attacks it upfield vertically. Nice job by Jay Dumas. A 54-yard punt, a 33-yard return. But does it matter? The Cougar offense still has to prove against this Trojan defense that they can move it. And they spin on and put it in the hands of the tight end, Eric Moore. Speaking of Oregon, let's go quickly to New York and John Saunders. John? Well, Brian, you're talking about the Rose Bowl. How about those ducks? They could get there. Danny O'Neill, 15 yards to Kristen McLemore. 20 to 3, Oregon has the lead over Arizona State. And in the whack, Utah holding off New Mexico now in the fourth quarter by one. Back to you. All right, John, thank you. And here are the Cougars on the move. Ball inside the 40 yard line. And they have brought in Derek Sparks Derek from Sparks, Santa Ana, Derek. California. And he picks up about three yards of Don Cunningham. On the stop, number 37. They ran uh, both linebackers up inside that time to try to break down that kind of play. And he almost popped in between them. You know, I had a chance to visit with a defensive secondary coach from USC. And you remember Dennis Thurman? Huh? Yes. He was a dandy. Sparks up on a wing now. On the break, high intercepted. And his man, but through high and Kelly with the interception for the Trojans. That's his first interception as a Trojan. He is a true freshman out of Overland, Colorado. Overland High School in Colorado, excuse me. Ryan Kelly, number 42. Top of your screen. They're going to throw the post pattern to the inside. He throws it a little bit high. They have a straight one there. He throws it there. See, it's just a little too high, and he's been throwing high all day. This young man was the 6A player of the year in the state of Colorado. One guy that elected not to stay home and play for the Buffaloes. And boy, are the Trojans happy about it. Just a true freshman, meaning he has three more years after this one to play. It's an old Harvard expression. <laughs> now the handoff, and they put it into Sermon's hands. The ball carrier number 25, Rodney Sermon. Sermon, 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 Sermon is another one of those true freshmen out of Bishop of Odd High School. Youngsters who gained experience with the Trojans early on in the season. And now this team showing some improvement. They would love a rematch with Penn State, wouldn't they? Watch it stick in your heart. Now second and eight for so USC. Time ticking away in the third quarter. And From the 43-yard line. Second down and long. Sermons to the 47-yard line. Well, this will be third and about four with Chad Eaton making the stop. Game Next week's a doubleheader. Nine o'clock. Pacific time. The Seminoles and the Fighting Irish in the second game, and the one you'll see out west, Arizona and USC. And if there's another game you want to see, call your cable operator. Third and three. High and intercepted. The Cougars have got a turnover with Ray Jackson. Balanced out. Now Rob Johnson throwing the ball too high, Brent. Big times throwing to your left. When you throw the ball high, you don't set up properly when you get back. You're trying to get rid of the ball quickly. You'll see it right here at the bottom of your screen. He's just a little slant in right here. Pause. Throws it right over the top of his head. And Jackson's trying to take it home. We'll have great field position here. That's a short field, 30 yards to go. Hicks is the running back. Kennedy's the motion receiver. 
gets hit. Nowhere. The Trojan defense and all he, over him that time. <laughs> George Perry coming down from the backside on that counter. You've got to cut him off backside when you pull both guard and tackles like they did on that. And they didn't get big George Perry cut off. A true freshman out of San Bernardino, California. God, they've got a lot of young kids here. No wonder they weren't very good on defense early in the year. No wonder he has so many gray hairs. That's what causes it. <laughs> First half of the season. That's where they came from. <laughs> we'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. This is Cap TV, Channel 35, Yakima. Back now for the final 15 minutes, second and 13. Cougars trail it by 10. Got him open, busting touchdown! Eric Moore, the tight end. Picking your spot to convert your first third down of the day. Yes, it is. Still no first downs, but this time they get a touchdown. Well, they went empty. They had no back in the backfield. Went out there, ran him up there like the tight end, and they blew the coverage. USC was blitzing. Easier to break down a coverage when you blitz. More apt to make a mistake. They made a mistake. Tony Truett. Take a look at Eric Moore catching his third touchdown of the year. He's a Southern California guy. There he is right here on your screen. No back in the backfield. He comes up, see the linebacker right there. That's Cunningham. He was supposed to take him. Tough coverage for a linebacker. Very, very tough coverage for a linebacker. It's a three-point game. And the Palouse alive again. Interception by Jackson sets up the touchdown. Eric Moore. The Cougar fans are alive a little bit. No one really wants to win this game, Brent. They just keep giving the ball back to the other guy. Olsen, who's been sent in to return. Ooh, send him in some more. He's got a little shake. He has a little quickness to him. Let's take a look at the numbers as at the end of the third quarter. First down here, dominated by USC. 11 to 6 total offense, passing yards. Everything really in favor of SC. Both teams with two turnovers. Time of possession. Four minutes advantage to SC. Someone's just got to make up their mind they're going to win this football game and not drop the ball or throw the interception. Leonard Green in that backfield. Kirby, one of the receivers, along with Johnson and Parker. And this is complete to Kirby. First man missed the tackle, but Ron Childs cleaned up. They were using a lot more of three receiver, one back attack early in the season. And they've gradually worked more to the two back attack. And they did that specifically today because they thought they could better handle the blitzing package that the Cougars present. But right then, they're spread out, forcing that, spread that defense out there, get that one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now, Coach Weiss hoping for another turnover. And on the other side, Coach Robinson wants a first down or a big play. They'll go two back here. Sermons and Barnum. And they run Sermons first down across midfield to the 49-yard line. See what they did that time, Brent. They blocked down with their tackle and stepped their guard around. The defensive end claps a little too much. And he just bounced outside. Now Walter's in. 
and Sermons leaves. Walters through. He's to the 43-yard line. He was tripped up as he came through the defensive line. Sasa. Running right there. Now Kyle Ramsey is in playing at right guard for Pollock. And they ran right up behind him and Garrido for a nice game. You know the guy coaching these running backs here is Charles White. Everybody was a coach and ever coached against him remembers that guy. There's Charles watching. Play was whistled dead. Go, baby! Penalty flag thrown on the far side. Ball starts on the offense. Repeat second down. That's a big penalty against John Robinson's coaching. You bet. Costly five yards right there. Especially against this defense. And when you're playing against this kind of defense, you're more apt to get offensive linemen to make mistakes like that because they know these guys take gaps, run through, jump around, and they get a little bit nervous up there. They move Hunter over on Kayshawn Johnson over on the right corner. Oh, nice catch! Woo! And Sasa, who's playing himself a whale of oh, a was that a nice play by the defensive tackle? When you get there that clean, most of the time you're slanting in that direction. Here he is, big fella right there. Look at him come down, come down right there. He's coming down. Wham! He just didn't get cut off backside by Andre Abraham. Nice job, John. They need eight yards on this third down. Johnson. Johnson behind him. Incomplete. He didn't want to go there. He made the adjustment. They took away the pattern outside. He went back to the slant pattern. Couldn't get it to him. Good defense. Good secondary play that time. Let me tell you something about the Palouse Posse. They'll rally a helmet. Oh, I guarantee you. And anything else you got on. <laughs> Just about as good a hitting defense as we've seen this year. Oh, that's why they're the number one in the country. Number 24, Torrey Hunter. Now Hunter, the DB is back. Stonehouse is trying to hang and bury them inside the 20. Hunter picks it up and steps out of bounds. So a veteran ball player saves a couple of yards on that move down there, doesn't he? We'll be right back. Formation, Grant, or play action, but it's been their base. Main, uh, main running formation. This time they're going to throw out of it and they hit the tight end. And the tight end busts the tackle before he is out of bounds. That's Ooh. David Knopf. David Knopf out of Huntington Beach, California, modern day high school. They could have thrown a flag on that one, Brent. There was some contact made out of bounds on that. They should throw that. At least it looked like it from here. Tight end right here. He'll run it straight to the sideline. They're running a slant pattern outside him. He turns. He throws it. Has to turn him around. Now, here's the out-of-bounds line right here. He's out there. No, that's all right. That's close enough. First and ten Cougars. Ball just on the other side of their 30-yard line with Davis setting the play. He reads blitz. Still free, and he's going to get it from behind. That's Jeff Cox. He saw the blitz, he audible, he wanted to throw it. Excellent coverage by the defensive backs, picking up one and one. They forced him to hold the football and allowed the blitz to get there. Got to give the credit. And I think the guy that did the nice job up there was Brian uh, Kelly up there, Brent. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's saying, hurry up, give me that signal. Let me go hit somebody again. Yeah. He's played himself a good game. Oh, he's a player. Love him. Second and 15 after the five-yard loss on the sack. Davis, far side, high and incomplete. Number 17, Carpenter. Yeah. He's not having one of his better throwing days. He came into the ball game throwing 57% complete. Not throwing quite that well today, Brent. Got to give the defense some credit, taking some things away, but seen a lot of balls going high. A little bit wobbly on that one. This young what is man he? in high school down around San Diego area threw for better than 9,000 yards. I wonder if we'll see the Redskin play yet come up. Yeah, yeah. the Redskin You've got to tell that story about the Redskin play. <laughs> Third down and 15. They've got him spread, boy. Now they go no back. Has time. Dumas won't get free. Excellent. And Dumas pulls up limping a little bit. Excellent. He is down at the 23-yard line. Dumas might be getting a little bit tired. He's been returning punts. He's thrown a pass. He's caught the ball. Run a lot of patterns where they haven't thrown him the pass. Out of Tacoma, Washington, Curtis High School. The Cougars lack the game-breaking wide receiver who can outrun the defensive backfield. Dumas with great hands, a very good, talented receiver, all-around athlete. But he's not one of those 4-4 guys that, uh, that you frequently need. George Martin. Back deep for the Cougars. They set a return. They let him get away on a high snap. And fielded at the 35-yard line by Kenny Grace. 11-21 to go. Final score, Penn State defeats Indiana, 35-29. We welcome all you pay-per-viewers who switched over. <laughs> we got a ball game here. It's 13, 10, 11, 21 to go. The Canes are doing business. The Buckeyes are doing a job. But here we got a lot of football yet to play. Rob Johnson and the Trojans of SC at the line. Johnson to Johnson. Complete. Breaks free. Isn't going to catch him for five. Put away for USC. He's done it. Kayshawn Johnson. 64-yard TD. You aren't going to catch a guy like that from behind. Six foot four, 205 pounds. Runs 200 meters in 21.9. He just ran about 40 or 50 in about 2.2. Two. Think all those pay-per-viewers think they wasted their money? <laughs> so three touchdowns today for Keshawn Johnson. He's been the big man as far as the Trojans are concerned. Eight catches for the 145, averaging better than 18 yards a carry. And now three scores. The extra point is good after the one that is blocked. Earlier, and so it's 20 to 10, and the lead is back to 10. You know, John Robinson told me last night he didn't think their secondary could hold up against their wide receivers. They beat him last year soundly by throwing the ball to the wide receivers, and they do it right here to Kashawn Jackson. And this guy, like you said, Brent, his third one, and he's going to head in. Now he's going to go play in the snow. <laughs> See, we love the snow. Excellent throw, good poise, and good pass protection. See, they gave him time to go ahead and concentrate on the coverage, where to throw the ball away from the defender going down inside, and then they threw it to the right guy. Mike Riley told me this guy loves to play football. He's in the offices bugging the coaches all the time about game plans and things they're going to do with the football. Look at him right here. He's doing the right thing with it. He's putting it down in the end zone. Well, the Trojans have only won 22 of the last 23 against Washington State, so folks watching a little football today can't be too shocked. It's just one of those things in sports. They just, they got their number, and they're up by 10 right now. For the first time in 36 years, the Cougars were favored today. It's 11.09 left in this ball game. It's not over yet. The one thing about this Cougar football team, that Brent, having spent the last couple days around here, you can really sense they are not the kind of kids that are, gonna, are convinced right now they're going to lose the football game. Evans, the ball, pick up on the five. Oh! Flush, 
right there. David Dotson did a real nice job in that. He's a third string fullback, Brent. So everything could be coming up roses for Oregon. Again, remember, if this holds, if this score holds, Oregon goes to the Rose Bowl if they win out and the Ducks do not play any of the other contenders. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it is going to give them an edge and a chance yeah. to control. And wouldn't that be something if John Robinson, if John Robinson gives his alma mater a chance to get to the Rose Bowl by beating Washington. Right now, he could care but less about his alma mater. He I wants know. to go himself. I thought I'd drop it in anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and the Cougars run the ball to the nine with Kevin Hicks. John is rebuilding a program. He's got a lot of SC people. I came into the booth this, today. Who'd I walk in with? Mike Garrett, their athletic director. I can remember coaching against him when he was a running back at SC and I was an assistant at Stanford a long time ago. See, they're uncovering the slot right now, Brent. See that? They're just asking him to go ahead and throw him the ball. Carpenter. Out at the 19-yard line, that's a first down, Cougars. Boy, they spread you from sideline to sideline. And, and USC doesn't really like to play a lot of nickel defense. Tough to beat SC when they're a good football team, regardless of where you are, Washington State or anywhere else. Coach Price, 0-5 against USC. And this year, he's only six points from coming into this game, 8-0, and none of that matters right now. He's down by 10. We got 10.20 to go. They run the draw. Nowhere. Trojan defense ready with Cedric Jefferson, number 97. You can really hear the noise of the shoes, the cleated shoes on the, this type of turf, this Omni turf. Not an Aster turf. It's a, it's a turf with fibers and they fill it with sand and you can hear them squeaking down there. What do you think? Jack Arut found a little uh, blazing fireplace and a hot toddy? I mean, he, he, might, he might have went out for a pop. I don't know where he disappeared. <laughs> yeah, he disappeared. I don't know where he goes sometimes. I don't know. That's amazing. Second and 11 for the Cougars. Nice job. And to Thomas. Nice That's job. 30. No, incomplete. Wave it off. They're waving it off. He apparently did not have possession on the ball. The linesman dashing upfield made the call. Brian Thomas, a redshirt freshman from Carson, California, San Pedro High School. Every time I think of San Pedro High School, I think of an Italian restaurant called Trading Brothers in that area. I wonder if they're still in business. Great food. <laughs> Third down, 9.40. Downfield, receivers slipping as he tries to break free, and they could not pick up Kearney Adams. Well, here we are in old Pullman, Washington. Look, look at, look at that. Up there, look at him. He's got himself a, a big drink. Look at him. Look. That's unbelievable. Hey, Roots are coming, he's sick. Oh, man. He's a character. Fourth down. Martin. I think if you run up the middle, you might run for 30 yards. Oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> right. When they don't expect a punt uh, run, you can run one against the coaches right now. It's there, Coach. It's there. I'm going to tell you. But it may not matter. 9.27 to go, and the Trojans lead it by 10. College football on ABC, brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Bayer, for the relief of tough body and joint pain. You get older, you get smarter, you get Bayer. And quality care service at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. Well, Mr. Vermeil, SC will try to eat up a little clock here. Summons. That, those two defensive tackles inside just are tough to move. You're better off of trying to trap them or block down on them and pull and that kind of stuff. But to run right at them like that, 
they are a force inside. They're just not getting any movement. Walters and a tailback. USC's playing with their third string offensive guards in there right now. That's, I, you know, early in the year, Phelan Pounds was their starter. He's not playing yet, though he might be back by next week. Bramer is out. Started against Cal. Pollock is out of there right now. Ramsey's out of there. Blitz. Oh! They pound the at the 35. Fields and Child. They really timed that one perfect. They've got us go on some long counts now, and you use that hard count, you'll get them offside. They just came out. Too many people in, in inside gaps to block. They'll come up right in here. Now watch them start moving. Here they come, right into it. Wow! They must rebuild this defense next year. Eight of these fellas are gone after this season. He's got a program going here, though. You know, the, the kids want to come here. He'll get them built up. Third and 11. Deep to Hervey. Great catch by Hervey. Boy, he waited an awfully long time to throw that football. He waited, he waited, he waited. And there he let it go. That's the first time in a long time they've given Rob Johnson that kind of time. He almost overthrew him anyway. Deep down the hole, he goes out now. Nice ability to reach out and catch that football. Nice job by him. Here it is again, another good look. Left side of your screen, now he leaps, takes out. Beautifully job, beautifully thrown. A nice way to go after the football. And remember he dropped one at the top of the game that might have given the Trojans a quick strike touchdown. Now 44 yards, first and 10, and Walters is stuffed at the 21-yard line. You know, they might want to try to get outside now. They're doing both a lot of that inside gap blitzing to stop the runs inside because SC really hasn't gone outside. If they go to their too tight, too tight end attack, they might be able to get that counter outside. Okay, we've got a, a program reminder tomorrow, the New York City marathon coming your way to Central and Pacific and then following that little golf gonna go over to Maui Lincoln Mercury Kapalua International the final round and the third round of that golf tournament you'll see following that football game here on the Pacific Network with Walters to the 17-yard line and Mark Fields making still another stop I don't know how many tackles Mark Fields has made but he's made a lot of them He's made a lot of them today. He's a guy that did not play last year. He was an academic redshirt last year, playing this year as senior. Got a chance to be a good one, maybe, and play on Sunday. He splashed in this one. They've got to take it away. Sermon. Slap down at the 20-yard line by Fields. See, they just, it's a waste of time to try to run in there against all those people. They got eight guys coming, and most of them inside. Doesn't look like they're going to kick a field goal. They definitely are not going to kick they're not going to give the Cougars a chance to block, block a field one. goal. Given the way that uh, the Cougars have come after the punts, they'll go ahead and play the fourth and ten. And they're going to let the clock... Yeah, I, think, I don't, know, I don't know if I agree with that. You they're going to have a halfway decent field goal kicker. Let's go down to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, it seems like we're always talking about traveling quarterbacks, people that start one place, go to another. Well, there's a new twist to one with Rob Johnson. Remember I told you at the top of the show I talked to his brother, Brett? Well, Brett transferred from UCLA to Michigan State University, where he had an up-and-down time, after the Tommy Maddox situation at UCLA. 
And the, the story that was told to me by Brett a couple of years ago was that Rob was headed towards UCLA to follow in his brother's footsteps. But when the transfer took place to Michigan State, they sat down as a family and tried to decide where could they go to get under the skin of the UCLA Bruins. They chose USC. Jack, it's interesting when you were uh, telling us the story about Johnson. Obviously, John Robinson had planned all along to run it down to one second, run time off, and then send Cole Ford onto the field. It's kind of interesting that a coach would elect to use a timeout in that situation, but he feels he's pretty much in control here. And now a 37-yarder, he'll try to get three. He must take 24 seconds off the clock. He's got it. There was a little bit of a hesitation down there underneath the goalpost before they signaled that that one was good. 23 to 10. Cougars need two touchdowns. And if Coach Price and the Cougars can't pull off a miracle here, Oregon is very much in the driver's seat. They could be headed for Pasadena. All they have to do is win out. Of course, that's easier said than done. Under. <laughs> that's Mike Berry, the offensive line coach, explaining that defensive front under, meaning the defensive linemen are shifting over on him. That's the normal terminology, anyway. That Ford will kick it off. Mobley and Hunter are back deep for the Cougars. Nice pick up. Mobley will give it a try. 16-yard line. And the Cougars now, if they've got any tricks up their sleeve, they're going to have to use them and try to spring a big play. Well, they do have some, but this field position down here isn't the greatest spot, but why worry about it now? Huh? Now, there's the remaining Pac-10 schedule. You can see Arizona on the left-hand side. Oregon winning the last time we checked. They go to Stanford, and they go to Oregon State. And I'm here to tell you that makes Oregon a huge favorite if SC wins this game. Now, we get word that Utah's in trouble. Let's send you to New York and John Saunders. John, what's happening to the Utes? Well, Brent, they led throughout this game, but with just over 30 seconds remaining, Nathan Bale, 22-yard field goal, and New Mexico has a 2-point, 23-21 lead. Brent. Oh, that's huge. Let's see, that puts uh, Colorado State, Brigham Young, opens up the whack, doesn't it? It's long! Incomplete! They ran that little stop and go again. He pumped to try to freeze the corner. Then he went to off. And that's very tough to throw accurately. And the quarterback, Davis, threw it accurately. Defended real well by Herpin. He's tied the Pac-10 for interceptions with three coming into this ball game. So it's third down. Fresh set of downs. That was Kevin Hicks stepping out there. And a reminder to stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental post-game report. That'll be coming up after the conclusion of this Pac-10 game. Now the clock has started again. Boy, some of the SC defensive players, they've been impressive today, haven't they? Jeff Kopp, Don Cunningham, Kelly with his first career interception at USC. Now that got a hole, Thomas, Thomas, bust to the 48. There's that middle screen again. They got that same zone they got early before, right before the end of the half against that free fee prevent defense, and it's much easier to execute that without the pressure of a man defense. See, now the, the linebackers and everybody will drop out of here and allow that middle screen to form. It'll From the bottom of your screen, you'll see him coming underneath. Now freeze it right there. You'll see that big hole. He's got a block downfield, a block right here, and here he goes. 
Now it's 4 4 and you would think that the Cougars would move with a little more quickness. Ball nice is job. Away and it's incomplete. That's John Kirkman over there on the corner. Wasn't that a nice job of just slipping in there and taking that ball away? Two-time state champion in the high hurdles coming out of high school. He's got some athletic ability, this young man. He's a senior. Coming outside, Cop back by number 35, Jeff Cop, who has played a great football game. <laughs> he likes to play. See, they started him inside, and he gradually moved outside and rushed as an outside linebacker, and they did not account for him in the pass protection, and he was home free. So the Cougs call a timeout. break 342 to go Washington State in trouble against Southern California hey Brent why don't we stay over and go skiing come down these slopes over here like that I think you'd probably be pretty good on those things wouldn't you well especially if my skis were on backwards like that it would <laughs> <laughs> that's I thought that's the way you're supposed to wear them I'm always going backwards <laughs> like the Washington State offense what they face here at 342, 23-10, this is third and 16. Middle screen, Moore is down hard. That's a tight end middle screen. I saw them run that against Cal, and they were very close to breaking. At that time, it was defense properly by the, the Trojans. Utah's first loss, another of the unbeatens, falls by the wayside. New Mexico does it at home, 23-21, and that throws the whack. Up in the air, doesn't it? What's that do for Colorado State? Got to put them right back in the chase. Yeah. But they got a tough one. They got to play their buddies from Wyoming. Fourth and 12. See, they're really playing loose right now. <laughs> USC takes over. <laughs> Jeff Cox. <laughs> now the Trojans can run the clock out. And put Oregon in control of its own destiny in the race for the Rose Bowl. Well, you're talking about the Rose Bowl. The main contender, of course, coming out of the, the Big Ten is Penn State. And, boy, I'll tell you, these teams are a long ways away from them right now. Now, that doesn't mean they won't improve, Brent. <laughs> but having watched Penn State for three games and saw them play in person last week, there's a big, big difference. Okay. Cougars have nothing left except to attempt to strike the ball. sitting down good on the hill. And I don't care what they're doing. And that ball throwing all over there. That won't beat you right now, okay? They just got to do a good job corner tackling him. And Sammy buzzing the flat. That's okay? Keith Burns don't talking to his safety. Don't come off that guy too soon push it down the field. Always now, coaching. Always coaching. They're going to come back. Long faces over there. The Cougars yeah. were hoping to do some business against against USC, but like I said, when the Trojans show up, they just get a W against Washington State. That's just the way it's been for decades, and that appears like it's going to be the way it's going to be here again. Uh, this will make seven in a row for the Trojans. They were beaten by Washington State back in 86. And it's 204 mark here with time running down. Oregon, they come away, it'll look this way. And again, Oregon, if they wind up tied with SC, Oregon would go based on head-to-head. -head. So, and Oregon, remember, also picked off Arizona at Eugene. The team they needed to get out of the mix is this one. John Robinson, meanwhile, is saying, hey, who knows? Oregon might go down there to stand for meals, buddy. Hey, dreaming. This is a special report from ABC News.
This is Barry Serafin in Washington. Former President Ronald Reagan this afternoon released a letter to the American people disclosing that he has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. In his letter, Mr. Reagan says he is disclosing the disease, as he and his wife Nancy did regarding their bouts with cancer, in the hope of raising public awareness and understanding of the mind-crippling disease. Mr. Reagan, now 83 years old, says at the moment he feels fine. In an accompanying statement, the former president's doctors say he is in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, but as the years go on, his health will deteriorate. In his handwritten letter, Mr. Reagan says, I only wish there was some way I could spare Nancy from this painful experience. Mr. Reagan says it was an honor to serve as president and closes by saying, I now begin the journey that will lead me into the sunset of my life. Again, former President Ronald Reagan has disclosed that he has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. I'm Barry Serra from ABC News, Washington. Well, back in Pullman, we have less than two minutes to go. It's 2310, Southern California, headed toward uh, what has to be a mild upset, only because the Cougars were favored for the first time in 36 years against USC by a point right down in that, in that vicinity. I think that's just really... Uh, a salute to Mike Price and what a great job he and his coaching staff have done up here. Really, sound of a gun. Not as easy. You got 7,000 people in the town and 17,000 people in the student uh, student body, and it's not a you know you've got to go somewhere and get all your players, and they've gotten enough kids to be very very competitive. You know, a nice little note in going out to Coach's house yesterday with he and his assistant coaches, and then driving by just a block down, he points over there. There's where that assistant coach lives. Oh, there's Drew Bledsoe's home. And <laughs> Drew, who gave the school $150,000, he endowed a scholarship. Moving right back here to Pullman, and of course, Drew and the New England Patriots play the Cleveland Browns tomorrow. So You're so saying, so what? Well, so what? It's a showing game that matches up two Washington State quarterbacks. Mark Rippon draws the start for the Browns because of the injury suffered by Benny Testaverde, and of course Bledsoe will be on the field for New England. They have turned out some, some terrific football players to the NFL out of Washington State. Just a tough to get 25, 28 to 30 real quality ones all on campus at the same time to produce that Rose Bowl football team. That, that's tough to do. But the kids in Oregon have to be excited today, huh? Boy, has Rich Brooks done a good job there. Huh? You know, I was starting to say before the news was interrupted, but as uh, John Robinson would say, wait a minute, Dick Vermeil's friend, Bill Walsh, maybe Stanford can do some business. And they are improving. Against Oregon. Yes, they've been losing, but they're, they're getting tighter scores. The defense is playing better, and you know they're going to score some points. There's Stenstrom with an eight-yard touchdown pass. Bill really likes Stenstrom, too. He says he's really a fine player. Well, wasn't Rob Johnson his receiver? For yes. The year? His junior year in high school, Rob Johnson was Stentrum's wide receiver. One year of experience as quarterback, huh? Of course, Bob Johnson Sr. was in our booth here at halftime to say hello. He's extremely successful uh, football coach at Tor El Toro High School in Southern California, taking a year off to watch his son play. So that's dominance, folks, right there. And that's just the way it's been. John Robinson's having fun coaching football right now. I'm talking with him, you can sense this. You know, and he's really enjoying it. He really thinks they're going the right direction. And he really believes that once again, there'll be a national championship caliber football team. They're not right now, <laughs> but they, they're working that way. So USC stays in the chase, and now they'll need help against Oregon, and of course, USC with a tough appointment against Arizona next week, and that will not be easy for the Trojans, but at least there's a little more definition to the Pac-10 race. I mean, it was wild coming into this weekend because there were four teams, none of them in control of their destiny, but now at least Oregon steps up and they become the team to beat. Lap on.
Well, it's interesting. Keishon Johnson, those three touchdown receptions, that ties a USC school record. Held you know, by several others. So he was the, the big play guy for the Trojans here today. And Johnson got him the ball. Johnson to Johnson. Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Might be a good name for a company. <laughs> Hook and ladder, but there's about eight defenders waiting for him. And Pass is up by Eric Moore, number 89. Penalty flag. Hand off to Derek Sparks. Work. Five yard face mask on the defense. Packing on to the end of the run. First down. People are throwing fans at the SC players down here in front of them. The uh, snowballs, yeah. the whole deal, huh? Throwing snowballs at them. Yeah. 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 Balls on the 35. It's first and ten. Cougars. Davis. Even running. That's it. No, they left one shotgun on the clock. And twice, still gunning, wants to get one. <laughs> and now, they run it off. And that's it. USC and John Robinson. Now, there's our genuine Chevrolet players of the day. Deshaun Johnson with three touchdowns for USC. Don Tessa, Washington State, he was tremendous in that defensive line. And $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools. Monday Night Football, Giants and the Cowboys for Jack Aroot and Dick Vermeil. I'm Brad Musburger saying so long from Pullman. It's 23-10. And coming up is the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report.